Greetings, compassionate viewers. I'm Dr. Hugh McCaig from Lively Toronto. The neighborly Canadian people, thank you for your noble deeds and treasure the friendship from viewers like you. The ancient mystical order Rosicrucius, also known as the Rosicrucian Order Amarch, is a worldwide cultural, educational, and philosophical organization that is perpetuating the profound and practical teachings of the Rosicrucians. These teachings has passed down and added to over the centuries from ancient Egypt to Europe and now all over the world pertain to the mysteries of the universe, nature, and humans themselves. I am pleased to present the following excerpts from the Rosicrucian book, Whisperings of Self by Validivar. Preface. Whisperings of Self is a collection of intuitive impressions received by a great mystic philosopher, Ralph M. Lewis, who in this work writes under the pen name of Validivar, known to Rosicrucians throughout the world as the head of the renowned mystic fraternity. Ralph Lewis has also received acclaim in the literary world as an author of books and articles on psychology, mysticism, metaphysics, and philosophy. The aphorisms in this collection have appeared singly in copies of the Rosicrucian Digest over a period of 40 years and comprise insights into all areas of human experience. Justice, war and peace, ethics, morals, marriage, family, work, leisure, and countless others. The words chosen succinctly describe the pattern of the universe. They tell of the hows, whens, wheres, and whys of existence. More than that, they serve as guides to show man the way to fulfillment, as guardians to ward off the ills that might beset him. Ralph Lewis's frank and direct style provides much food for thought in each brief impression. A reader develops the habit of using a thought for a day. And then there are more than 200 from which to choose. These are truly personal guides to daily living. And we hope that they will serve you well. The Aphorisms The moral motivation for goodness on the part of man is both biological and psychological. It is the desire for the harmony of one's being with his surroundings. Study is the conscious effort to learn. The pleasure to be gained is a secondary motive. There can never be a paradise populated with men of low intent and little restraint. Any condition that always occurs in relation to a phenomenon is a law. We are rich only when we do not want more than we have, regardless of how little that may be. A thing has intrinsic value if its essence is in demand because of its essential contribution to some human purpose. The strong are those who show compassion for the weak, for they are able to resist the vanity of their strength. Tolerance is an attitude which preserves individualism without jeopardizing the welfare of a whole people. We live by what we know, not by what may be so. The past is an image of what men once thought and did. It becomes an incentive to try and emulate it or rise above it. Tolerance is the recognition of the right of others 
to any actions or expressions of thought which are not contrary to what a whole people conceive as their welfare. Public decency is the attempt to preserve that evolved aspect of self to which man has laboriously attained. Homely philosophy is an appeal to popular opinion rather than a challenge to individual reason. Never hire a friend, but be friendly to those you hire. A human's five senses are the result of his organic dependence upon those characteristics of reality we call motion, mass, and attraction. A virtue is a self-disciplinary action by which a certain standard of behavior is attained. Frustration arises from infringement of unrelated ideas upon one another, preventing the satisfactory culmination of any single one. Superstitions are the assumption of causes. They are substitutes for unknown causes or the attempt to invoke those that do not exist. When writing or speaking, be informative. No one likes to chew on chaff. Rosicrucianism is not a particular subject, but rather the furtherance of the spirit and application of knowledge. If solely by his own reasoning, one can arrive at the same conclusions as the great thinkers before him, he should find encouragement in his pursuits, for it is only the limits of his own mind which may prevent him from surpassing them. No man is inherently great. It is only the exercise of those powers which are his that makes him so. A Socrates and an Aristotle were not destined to be. They became such. Reason is a blade that grows dull, if not wedded with thought. The ideal of the true society must be to so monitor the powers and faculties of men that each may realize the wholeness of his being. The good in life should be a human creation in relation to events, not a search for a latent inherent good in nature or the world. If philosophy is the love of wisdom, then science is the love of coherence. It is better to think and occasionally be found wrong than to be always right because you are a follower of another. Human relations is the study of mankind with the purpose of revealing and removing the basic causes of conflict among men. The inconsistency of the television audience is that it finds satisfaction for hours in idly watching a portrayal of the active lives of others. Inferiority is not a virtue by which all that exceeds it is to be protested as a vice. Perhaps most of our dissatisfaction with life comes from the fact that our pursuits of happiness are too numerous. Each thing sought in itself seems crystal clear in the joy it will afford, but collectively they detract from each other, dis diminish our enthusiasm for any one of them, like an assortment of art treasures heaped high. A life is lived in a moment of ecstasy. No man is free whose mind is not like a door with a double acting hinge, swinging outwards to release his own ideas and inward to receive the worthy thoughts of others. The challenge to almost all philosophers has been, we are and the world appears to be, yet if one alone is real, why the other? If both are real, how may they be conceived as one? In general, God is the ultimate of the individual's conception of supreme power, initial cause, and moral perfection. A miracle is a perceived effect of an unperceived cause. If we know all there is and the laws thereof, there is still the mystery of the cause. Human progress continues only so long 
as a human concept can exceed attainment. The struggle for freedom is the primitive and eternal fight of human will against necessity, natural and social, which imposes itself upon man. The higher form of society, which we call civilization, really begins with a growing self-consciousness and the attempt to have it discipline the whole of human behavior. The vocative and written word can be dynamic. It is a force once released, not easily controlled. Therefore, nothing should be more carefully selected than our words. The greatest thoughts are simply expressed, for their simplicity is evidence of their clarity. Good is the content of whatever men call happiness. Something can only be an ideal by comparison with something else whose context stands as inferior. Arrogance is an increased consciousness of power accompanied by a decreased conscience. What have we learned from war? How to fear the next one even more? For more information on the ancient mystical order Rosicrucius or Emorch, please visit www.emorch.org. Courageous viewers, thank you for joining us on today's Words of Wisdom. Please join us again tomorrow for part two of our program as we study more from the Rosicrucian book titled Whisperings of Self.